Thanks for coming on, buddy. Thanks for doing it. Good. See ya. Good. Come on in. All right. Oh man, it's nice and warm in here, dude. It's super cozy. Yeah, hang your stuff up there and settle on in. I will. Do you have your lunch yet? Yeah, no, but let's eat lunch, have you? No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you want your wrap or you want to eat your bread? Sourdough, whole wheat sourdough. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's okay, next week I'm gonna make a cutting board. That bread looks a little bit nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Sean did offer me some. <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, my wife made it up. <laughs> Boys and girls, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is luxury. It's gonna go soft. I don't know if we're gonna make it out not <laughs> and ice fishing. <laughs> That's a very, uh, very true statement. It's funny you get to where I've gotten used to. Not mentioned this before, but I've gotten used to cold camping over the last several years. Well, since I lost my cat or got rid of my cabin, first cabin. What was that the year 2000 or 2001? So I've been basically cold camping in winters and not, uh, you know, having the luxury of a heated cabin. So it's starting to go soft already, even though it's only been a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, I never uh, used a hot tent until maybe last year as well. Yeah, I like them. Yeah. There's two, you know, it's two different kinds of camping, yeah. right? I'll still do both, but I'm gonna steal this real quick. Well, look at the difference with. Um, well, we're getting older too, I guess, a little bit. I am, at least. <laughs> but if you look at, um, you know, the hot tenting wasn't really mainstream until recently. You couldn't get hot tents unless you went to the great big uh, shows or the guide tents. You know, the right? Big, oh yeah, yeah. Outfitters yeah. tent, I guess. Yeah. So now it's more available and a lot more information out there. But it's also a lot heavier, right? So it's not stuff we, I like to explore if I'm gonna go and do stuff, so. Yeah, they're good for a base camp kind of thing and then go from there or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Definitely have their place and so do just bivvies, right? <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. I was happy about it. I was like, cool, he's giving my kid yeah. out against the attention. <laughs> so we're going pike fishing. Part of the reason Joe's here at the cabin is we're going to do a little ice fishing trip and cold camping, or not cold camping, hot tent camping. So we're going to head out uh, from here in the morning and uh, go on, out onto a lake where there's some pike and walleye. Set up the camp in the bush, the tent, and uh, headed onto the ice. Now it is going to be pretty cold and uh, I think sunny at least so it won't be too bad but get some minnows and, and uh, fish with those for both the pike and the walleye. Pickerel we call them here in Canada mostly but I'll try some of these lures as well. Last time actually Joe and I haven't seen each other for September maybe October? Did we? What did we do then? Here I just came here and did the, oh, yeah, yeah. the interview thing. Right. Yeah, we haven't been out on a trip or anything since Woodland Caribou. Woodland Caribou, that's like almost a year now. Mm -hmm. Trying to sharpen up this, uh, actually it's pretty sharp still, I'm going to just put a strop on that. I sharpened it last week as you saw before I headed out with my wife ice fishing. So I'll just touch those up. This is actually a mora. <laughs> Everybody's into the mora knives, so well, this is a mora auger, ice auger. So it's, uh, it's kind of an old style and it's I've had this forever and doesn't nothing really can happen to it. You can replace the blades if you do chip them. They love painting the little baby blue on stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for you guys don't know that um, or haven't watched, which probably isn't too many of you, Sean James here has a YouTube channel called My Self Reliance and he's built this cabin by hand with, with hand tools and he's got a whole list uh, of catalog of videos building it from the ground up starting one last spring. Yeah, I think May. Last spring till now, and he's still, he's done the cabin, 90% done the cabin, as you can see. 
tons of stuff more to do on it, more home study stuff to do. So check his channel out. I'm sure you guys will like it. It's very interesting. He's blowing up right now. It's uh, you got to get on in on the ground floor. <laughs> <laughs> So the, most of you guys probably know Joe as well. Of course, Joe and I have been going God, well, we have known each other. Well, we two, first trip year? two years ago. Two years. First trip we did together was out going to the park uh, two years ago. It was a uh, canoe trip. <laughs> but I wanted to learn the trout fishing. Yeah, yeah, That's and I couldn't teach. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> and a friendship was born. <laughs> <laughs> In hardship. <laughs> All I remember from that trip is dehydration. <laughs> His passing out from dehydration. I remember losing that trout after catching yeah, it. Yeah. I tried to clean it off in the water. It was all muddy. I was like, wait, I want to get a picture. <laughs> it's only this big anyway. Too. <laughs> but I was stoked. Yeah, yeah. Where you worked for that one? I worked, and then she got away. And then we cooked a chub. Oh yeah. 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 And some what perch? Yeah, fall fish perch and uh, oh yeah, a little, we didn't even little have bit of trout. No, a little trout. Yeah. A little baby, baby guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember we did three ways or you did yeah, three yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Check that video. If, uh, the original. You watch it. Yeah, the original. So this year will be two years of uh, study and doing trips together. We're gonna do another spring canoe trip. That'll be fun. I'm gonna do one this year yeah. too. I missed that last year. Well, we did our big mm -hmm. one, but I didn't get it in May for the trout. Oh yeah, there was no. It didn't work for me in May. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so variable from one year to the next. And what's odd this year? So, I mean, you guys have been following along and seeing all the snow that we've had here at the cabin. Well, where is it now? We had three thaws. So typically, well, I'm not sure if it's typical everywhere in North America. We get what we call a January thaw. And usually once middle of the month, we'll get a few days of warm temperatures. Well, some of the snow melts, but this year we've had three thaws up to nine degrees Celsius and rain, you know, quite a bit of rain as well. So it really knocked the snow down. So you don't even need snowshoes, which <laughs> kind of look forward to as a Canadian here in Ontario going snowshoeing. And now that's gone, but I uh, can't complain because it is easier to walk and the animals are able to access food that they haven't been able to earlier. And the sleds pull almost yeah. frictionless yeah. on that crust. Mm. I should have brought my skates. The lakes are clear right now, no snow on them. I could have brought my uh, skates and actually towed the uh, sled around the ice. Towed Joe around, <laughs> Joe around the ice. <laughs> the typical Canadian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got a couple of new knives here. Joe brought up for me from Adventure Swarm. I don't know. Do you know anything about these things? I do. Yeah, I do. Um, so this is the Fisherman model. This is his first, I believe, first run at the take of the of the Fisherman models. So he had a, a little bit of um, uh, trial and error with the sheaths, but came up with a really, really quality sheath. I think. Yeah. Oh, they made it in house. Oh yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we got. Pretty good bend on it mm -hmm. for a fillet knife, and that's cedar. That's a cedar wood with um, OD green spacers. So that's really nice. I've never seen a, a cedar wood handle before. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw that they were doing that, I was pretty interested in it, and then it turned out to be yours. Uh, and then he sent a matching, whoop, a matching classic, which is a really nice knife. I'm actually pretty jealous of the color combo on this one and the whole the whole get up, but they're matching uh, cedar with green again. But yeah, and then a matching uh, fire steel. So yeah, thanks cool. to those guys. Yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it. He's gonna let me use his fancy axe. What does it weigh? You think three pounds? The head? Be at least, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Half, I think it was. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Pretty cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. I see you Take these off and we can pull from here when we're having our fire tonight. Okay. We're looking for a wild animal track, but Callie said it's running around like crazy through all this area, so we've seen most of their tracks so far. Wild Callie. This is actually an otter track. It would have walked through here when we had that thaw and then it refroze. And uh, I can tell by its activity, its behavior. So it went, there's an opening, a little fast water right there so it doesn't freeze. We had our shelter just back in the bush uh, right behind it in March. But you can see it went from that water to just up around the corner where that uh, burned out dead hemlock is up there there's more open water there a little stream so this otter is obviously going from stream to stream and you can see the otter slide right here they like to when they get on ice or snow or a slope they like to throw their bodies down and, and uh, toboggan themselves across the ice pre they're pretty cool animals see the moose tracks going up through the deeper snow here I had a feeling there was moose back here again I saw them last spring but there haven't been that many around, so this is just a single moose walking through. It's a pretty good sized track, so it's probably a bull. See it came through also in the, through that melt, so it's, it's frozen now in there, pretty, pretty uh, um, defined. So it was lightning? Yeah, lightning strike. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Is this that little islandy looking thing that we saw from over there? It is, yeah. Oh, okay, so that's not so bad anyway. Wouldn't it spread too far? That's the thing. A lot of people have asked me about the why they cut all the trees down and what am I going to do around the cabin for forest fire prevention and what am I going to do to protect the cabin. This area is mostly hardwood, deciduous, except for these little pockets around the uh, waterways that to grow all this these uh, coniferous trees well that's the fire hazard usually in the summer these dry off they're like tinder fire. one spark yeah it can light them it so climbs it like a ladder yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. then just they go across the tops well because we have breaks hardwood breaks the fires don't really travel here so you get these little one acre fires from a, a lightning storm that really doesn't get out of control these are big hemlocks those are all dead yeah all when all the snow from the fire, the whole you can see the, all the roots like that. Oh, okay, right so in. it is all burned up. Yeah, yeah. So this I mentioned this in another video early. This grove of uh, burn here was struck by lightning. I think two years ago. Two, maybe I don't know if it was two years ago, but last year looked fresher. Let's put it that way. So it was probably a year old at that point. Fire went into the ground and burned all of the roots of these trees. And then they started following, but there's hardly any fire damage up on the trunks or even in the canopy, which is kind of unusual. So I don't know where the fire started and how it spread underground without traveling into the, the tops of these hemlocks. But um, see, where it just burned right through the roots of, of this yellow bird. And now when that's going to go over soon too. And a hemlocks, Joe's standing on a maple there, I think. And cedars. So like I said, it's a grove of mostly coniferous trees with a few deciduous burned up at ground level toppled over this is going to be wildlife habitat for the next 20 years the show sugi ban so show shu sugi bon however you say that term <laughs> that uh, wood preservation technique i used on the logs for, or on the the uh, floor and the roof this is charred cedar so the burned from the inside out this charcoal, this stump probably is going to stay here for 10 years or more. Even though it's thin, it's just a hardened charcoal piece of cedar, which already lasts a long time when it's elevated off the ground, especially. But that is actually natural wood preservation. It's 
bird and cedar like that, that literally, it's, like I said, it's gonna last, that could last 80 years. It doesn't get too uh, covered in snow and melting and moisture. Oh, that's a perfect <laughs> <day. Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. Bear ribs and steak, beef steak, but I kind of need some coals going. <laughs> I mentioned before on video but bear has to be cooked to well done you can carry trichinosis which is similar to what pork used to carry commercial meat and stream until they straighten that out by watching what they fed the pigs but it has not been eradicated from wild game so bear can carry the trichinosis parasite so we'll cook it to well done and you're perfectly fine these are bear ribs it's a big old plate of ribs. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, this is well done, buddy. Thank you. Get used to the cabin life, man. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll wait, probably uh, finish dinner, clean up, pack up a few things, and the first thing in the morning we're going to head out and go ice fishing. So we want to get a fairly early start, start I think, to do that. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, I am. All that exercise, that one load of flare wig. <laughs>
Alright, well we've got to our spot. We're gonna call home for today, tonight. First thing we want to do is clear spot. We both got some brought our shovels with us. Clear away the how much ever a couple inches of snow there is, set up the hot tent. Um, yeah, and then we can get out onto the ice, start cutting our holes. to go. This is my snow trucker tent. Comes with these poles. You can see how like, it's really easy actually to put together. You've seen the way we operate and look how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Mm -hmm. Oh, There's <laughs> Benny Hill music in the back. <laughs> Ben Hill, you're too, you're too young now. I know, I'm showing my age, Sean. <laughs> okay. Fish is a bolt, 
<laughs> speed that up when you ten times speed. <laughs> yeah, just whenever you want me to take over, I'll be good for a bit. We'll do another one. Okay. <laughs> Decent. Catch a couple of those. Yep, that's a good meal for yeah. one. Heck yeah. Decent. Heck yeah. That's one each, pretty good dinner. I got one on two. Nice. Oh, dude, it's a bass. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, a little baby bass. It's a chunky one, it's a good dinner. caught three perch maybe in his entire lifetime out of this lake he was surprised what he did that's an eating size too perch for dinner another pike from the hole inside the hut this time nice chunky good eating pike clean it up with this new uh, knife that Joe hooked me up with. It's uh, from Adventure Sworn, new fillet knife line that they just started. Caught uh, got some water. Alright. Got um I don't know how many pike we got there's three on the ice with the three on the ice. There's three pike on the ice. We caught three pike first, and then I caught a perch, which I kept, and then just as I was pulling the lines up, ended up catching the I think the biggest pike of the day. So I have those frozen outside, most of the pike. I only have two pike fillets in here and the perch. So I'll cook those up and I'll bring the rest of the pike back to the cab. So I think what I'll do is just throw some water and some butter in this pan. So 
sort of poached in butter because we didn't bring any seasoning from the cabin or much oil actually. That was good. Thanks guys. Thanks guys. Alright, dropping the fish into the boiling water and butter. three at a time actually. Three of them are ready. That plate's cold so it's not staying warm very well. Hold on. All right, first test. Mm. Buttery. Very, very mild. Extreme mild. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I am. We are going to bed. <laughs> hot air, it was full of hot air. <laughs> this balloon should just ignite. <laughs> it's not a balloon. Nope. The irony of a hot tent, when you're down at this level, it's cold, when you're up there, it's 100 degrees. But it's nice coming in from outside. You stand up, you get warmed up, then you lie down and get in bed. And uh, you let the fire go out, so you're really dressing and uh, using a sleeping bag that's suitable for the coldest temperature, not the warm temperature when you have the fire going. So my sleeping bag's a minus 30 or minus 40 down. Got a down jacket. I stripped down to pretty well nothing, if not nothing, and uh, just keep some clothes nearby so that I can throw them on if I want to go out and want to get up in the morning. So that's it. I am um, saying good night. I'll see you in the morning. So welcome back to the cabin, by the way. Uh, if you watched all the way through the video and you're at this point, I appreciate you sticking around for a video that's not typical of my videos lately. R appreciate everybody who's been uh, following along and also so many new subscribers and new viewers. Really overwhelmed by the uh, response to the videos I've been making and the, and the lifestyle I'm creating here. So I really, really appreciate every single one of you viewers. I really just, I, like I said, I'm overwhelmed. This video that you just watched is not typical of my videos over the last year because I didn't do any cabin construction. Uh, but I, what I did do is get out with a friend and, and got out to enjoy some of the beautiful winter weather we've been having. Um, if, you, if you don't recognize Joe, if you haven't seen his videos, then make sure you check out his channel. You'll see some videos from the two of us in the past on both of our channels and I'm sure in the future as well. I think this is a good video to talk about resources, natural resources, especially in this area. This is not typical, I guess, of places that a lot of you guys are, are living and, and what you're used to. Up here in Canada, we just, we have very low populations, about 30 million people living in the, in the uh, country and it's the second biggest country in the world. So we have very low population density, except for in the south areas, like around Toronto and Montreal and you know, anywhere in the southern parts of the province, provinces. So when you see me out harvesting trees, cutting trees down, it's because we have an abundance of them. And if I take one tree down, in fact, when this 
this uh, great big black cherry drops, it's opening up the canopy so that sunlight can reach the forest floor here. And all these little saplings that we have growing here are going to grow up into trees. So the forest needs to keep evolving. So why is that relevant in this video? You saw us catching some pike earlier and panfish, that perch that I caught. What I try to do is focus on the species that are typically overabundant or that are underutilized. So the fish that we're fishing for are northern pike. I try to keep those as much as possible. Most people don't. They send them back into the water, they release them, and what happens is the system becomes overabundant with pike and is less diverse because less other species can compete with them. So it makes sense ecologically to harvest pike from a lot of lakes. Um, that's not the case everywhere, of course, but in this lake in, in particular that we're fishing, too many fish too many pike, what happens is they become stunted because they're competing for the prey species. Uh, so that we, it's encouraged, in fact the ministry has encouraged people to catch more fish from this little lake even though it's a little private lake and only a few people actually have access to it. And I have to really thank my friend Terry who's been so generous to me this year allowing me to uh, harvest some things from his land but also just to spend some time together in the outdoors. It's been a lot of fun Terry so I really appreciate that. I really, really like doing things alone, whether that makes me an introvert or something wrong with me or not. I just really enjoy that. But it doesn't mean I'm a total introvert and that I don't like people. So I really have a good time when I get out with some friends like Joe. And you're seeing a lot more of my wife uh, out here with trips. We've always been doing stuff together. Um, but whenever I've been building the cabin, I am alone completely. And that's sort of a personal challenge that I gave myself. But um, you know, when they ask people that uh, live a long life what the secret is, almost invariably it's good relationships, having love in their life. So, uh, you know, I encourage people, whether you're an introvert and you, whether you like to you have your time on your, on your own or not, uh, I encourage you to form some deep relationships and, and uh, make sure you, you have uh, good people in your life that you want to spend time with certainly creates a richer life and when you look back those are the things you're going to remember you might might not remember some of the more foolish things in in your life especially the uh, things that are kind of imposed on us like like work in modern society so getting out in the outdoors enjoying some time with friends and family i don't think there's any better memories that you can make and i'm thrilled that i was able to do this and i continue to do that so get outside, have fun, work hard, but make sure you enjoy your life too and have uh, lots of fun and great relationships. So that's it guys for this episode. Look forward to uh, seeing you up here at the cabin again next week. Take care. Have a great week.